Now to this hack attack that has Hollywood on edge. The hackers virtually kidnapped unreleased episodes of Orange is the New Black. This move the hackers made is a warning shot. From the elections to entertainment is nothing safe. As more activity is sent to the cloud, are the companies securing the data set up for investment? We're supposed to make a Fortinet. That's the high-quality cybersecurity play with a stock that got dinged last week after the company reported what looked to me like a pretty good quarter. Okay, for those of you who don't know, Fortinet is what's known as an end-to-end cybersecurity provider. They're a one-stop shop for protection, which makes it easier for corporate customers who can just buy one thing rather than need to cobble a whole system together from a bunch of different vendors. Now, last week, Fortinet reported a nice top and bottom line beat with 22% billings growth and management raising its full year guidance. But instead of rallying, the stock actually got hurt a little bit. I frankly found it confusing. I think it's pretty simple. Fortinet, though, had run roughly 30% year to date going into the quarter. And when a stock is up that much, it's very difficult for it to keep rallying, even in the wake of a good quarter. So can the stock resume its climb? Mr. Del Mato, welcome back to Mayor. Good to see you. Good to see you again, Jim. Thanks for having me back. Okay, Drew, one thing that I know our customers, uh, our viewers know, is that customers are all afraid. But I still find that there's tons of customers. We have 30,000 customers. I'm sorry, 300,000 customers. We just added 10. The customers still haven't really caught on, even though they're afraid. That's a lot of customers, but there's a lot of others that haven't invested yet. Yeah, well, you know, the hacks continue, right? The the criminals stay out there, and uh, there needs to be more spending. The cyber criminals are spending plenty of money. You're, it's interesting, you know, you're, uh, most businesses think they're competing with other businesses. Right. But in cybercrime, you're competing with other countries. You're competing with people, you know, in a garage somewhere. And they're just spending a lot of money, and there's a lot of upside for them. And so, you know, the, the idea is uh, the companies and governments and people really need to think architecturally about how they protect themselves, get a lot of training, and keep themselves up to date against all the threat factors. Well, Drew, last time we were speaking, you talked to us about new kinds of threats. Your company is actually category, really adds a catalog of what's going on right there. What is the latest since we've seen you last? The latest in terms of threats? Yeah. Yeah. So we've seen a variety of things. We have, um, you know, it's interesting. We work with NATO. We work with Interpol. We stopped a couple of threats that I can mention, and then I can mention one that came over the weekend okay, that I think sure, is actually quite interesting. Yeah. Um, with Interpol, we actually stopped a cybercrime organization in Nigeria that has gotten away with $60 million. And then uh, there was another organization we worked with Interpol on in ASEAN, uh, in Asia, mm -hmm. Southeast Asia. And they had 2,000 servers out there creating, automating malware, basically infecting governments and customers. 2,000 servers? 2,000 servers. In some room? Yeah, just spread across the network and just automated driving malware, and we helped uh, prevent that. Okay. And then I think over the weekend, you know, I saw one where a local streaming company, if you will, right. had their new season of a popular series stolen. Right. And so ransomware is out there. They shut down a ransomware, shut down a hospital years ago, uh, about a year ago, where they got some money. And so ransomware, I think, is, is the one that's really top of mind. And that's forward. people, too, right? I mean, there's people, Absolutely. not just enterprises, but people they're targeting. They're targeting people like you, like me. They're building profiles on us. They want to get your financial data. They want to get your social security data. They want to get whatever they can because maybe they use it against you. Maybe they hold you hostage with it. And maybe they monetize it in some way by pretending they're you. Well, Drew, did, when you heard about the Democratic Party hack, was that something where you just said, geez, if they had just invested a little money with us, they, this wouldn't have gotten to that point? Well, governments are always atop of the list for other governments. I don't think there's anything new there. I think, you know, the, the, the thought there is that really governments should continue to spend more. And I right. believe uh, President Trump administration is doing that. I think there were some announcements today on technology. Mm -hmm. I believe they'll continue to spend. I think that's a great thing. I think when they think about next generation architectures, Things like thinking about a fabric, like Fortinet security fabric, right. for instance, something that goes end to end. And if they want to go in the cloud, we can stretch into the cloud. If they want to do on-premise, we can do that or something hybrid. And I think that's the important where it's segmented, where they can segment the data to keep, if people get in, they maybe get to the one, one level, but they don't get to the finance data and the HR data and all the other things that are there. But automation the management capabilities that you get with the fabric, I think, are paramount. Well, I, I know that's an ecosystem a lot of companies really have cobbled together. I'm looking at share take, and it seems like every year your share goes up. Is the pie getting bigger, or are you just taking customers from others? Well, absolutely, the pie's getting bigger, but we're taking customers from others. I mean, we're going two or three X the market, so we're absolutely taking share. If you look at, you know, what I found most impressive about this quarter was our 
enterprise growth in the United States. We grew 31 percent in the United States. Uh, our deals over 500K grew 31 percent. I thought that was an incredible number. Yeah. And I mean, so, incredible. And it's the Fortinet security fabric. But the, the hallmark of these customers and these larger deals is that they're buying multiple products, Jim, mm -hmm. and they're buying uh, enriched bundles with more security content in them. And the great thing about that is that's the gift that keeps on giving from our perspective right. because you, those are higher margin recurring revenue stream. A lot of software. We add some content. We charge a little mm -hmm. more. And then that renews every year. So right. that's a great model for it. Last question. Absolutely. Which sector, which industry is you all, everyone knows, isn't spending enough? Well, um, I would have to say all of them, really. You know, when I think about, you know, where we're doing well, clearly financial services right. is right at the cutting edge. Uh, you know, the, the top financial institutions tend to spend a lot of money, but they continue to spend. Uh, we have a variety of clients, uh, you know, I could mention a variety of clients that are building up not only in the data center, but there are branch locations where performance is paramount. They're thinking about internal segmentation, which creates more opportunities for us to sell servers and more software. And again, the higher margin recurring revenue streams that I mentioned. Excellent. Well, your stock is the cheapest, oddly, of the cybersecurity stocks, which I don't get at all because it's the one that has the most visibility and doing the best. That's Drew Delmato. He's the CFO of Fortinet. And I, I have to tell you, I thought the quarter was terrific, but this is the only one that's been going up. And so there was some profit taken. I would stick with Fortinet and I'd stick with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.